Halo. We are back. You're back. Okay, so, so, so we continue. And actually, I have figured out the breakout rooms. So you can imagine from the next... Uh, <laughs> From the next lessons, we are going to be have we are going to be having breakout rooms, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. And if you're you're not in the breakout room, then I'll be wondering where you are. <laughs> so let's continue for the next at least one hour. So I already okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. Before we continue. I'm sure right now you're wondering, um, what, no, what is this biotechnology? Does it have to do with genes or does it not have to do with genes? Actually, there's a difference between non-gene biotechnology and gene biotechnology. So what is non-gene biotechnology? Non-gene biotechnology involves whole cells. That means you don't get go inside the cell. Tissues or even individual organisms. It is more common and involves plant tissue culture. For example, in Kenya, I know for those of you who come from Central, there's a lot of tissue culture bananas. That is non-gene biotechnology. It doesn't have anything to do with the genes. No, so there's no modification of the genes. Hybrid seed production, which you've had for so long, Carry has worked on that for so long, that has nothing to do with genes. So nobody should tell you that that's GMO. Hybrid seed production is not GMO. And of course, you've got the very basics, microbial fermentation. Again, that is not, has nothing to do with genes. It is all non-gene biotechnology, okay? So it's good to have that distinguishing thing in your mind, uh, feature in your mind so that you don't get mixed up. The other thing, uh, when you look at gene biotechnology, it deals with genes. You actually go into the cells, into the chromosomes, into the DNA, into the genes. And it involves the transfer of genes from one organism to another. Going to genetic uh, engineering, going to transgenic organisms, as we're going to see later. This is where the GMOs fall under, etc. So remember, all this is happening under this big umbrella called biotechnology, but there's actually a distinction between non-gene biotechnology, which is actually the biotechnology that has been um, practiced for, for millennia. Some of, it, some of that, yeah, including fermentation. But of course, now we've got the most modern, actually the modern biotechnology where we are going right inside into the genes and this is where the trouble starts. So I mentioned before, Biotechnology is interdisciplinary. You can't just have it as biotechnology only. Okay, so there's so much more that happens in biotechnology. Uh, there's so much more that happens. And uh, there are so many disciplines that are involved in biotechnology. And it is good to know so that, uh, and this is at times very interesting for careers because sometimes people tend to limit themselves and think, oh, I'm not into uh, biotechnology proper, but you can see there's the microbiology, there's genetics, there's biochemistry. So just as you have bio, biotechnology, you have biochemistry. There is biophysics. Uh, there's molecular biology. There is... Just a moment.
Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. So uh, then, of course, you've got molecular biology, there is bioengineering. Think about it, and it's there. It's all biotechnology. I've actually given you a link. Let me see whether I can access that link now. And let me know, let me know whether you can. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, what can you see? Can you see a PDF, Nature of Biotechnology? Or what are you seeing? Interdisciplinarity. Yes, you are doing, you are seeing the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, fine. So that means you can still see my river. So I'll present that later, no problem. Yeah, I need to get out of this uh, presenting mode and get into another one, but no worry. But uh, what I need to do, uh, is to copy this and go to Chrome. So, just a minute, we're soon going to be there. So, let me see whether I can stop sharing the... Let me see whether I can stop sharing the PDF and share... Sorry, whether I can stop sharing the PowerPoint and share the PDF. Um, let's try to see. <laughs> Can you see that? Am I sharing? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yes. Anyway, I'll, I'll try that later. I think I know where the problem is. I'll try that later. But I think beyond that, uh, uh, now I want us, so we've looked at the interdisciplinary nature of uh, uh, technology. And as we continue, you are going to see it's going to be fitting in. You're going even for your own self. You'll see, okay, here they're applying biochemistry. Here they're applying physics. Here they're applying what you 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 are going to see that for for yourself. So for yourself. So let's look at the history, the evolution of biotechnology. Did biotechnology start yesterday? <clears throat> When did biotechnology start actually? And where are we right now? I want to, I wanted to show you a video. So let me see whether I can upload this video. Uh, So I'm trying to <coughs> upload a video. Uh -huh. I don't know why it's... <laughs> Hi, everybody. So today we're going to be talking about biotechnology. So let's go ahead and break down this word. So first I see this prefix bio, and I hope that at this point in the year, everybody see? knows what Can that means. Sharing? Bio means life. No. Okay. No. Okay. 
just just a little bit uh just a little bit more time oh. just a little bit more time let's see whether we will get it yeah. uh, so let's see whether we'll get it here um uh, trying uh -huh. yeah i think it's Are we there? <laughs> so I think um, um, I'm experiencing some problems. I'm experiencing some problems in uploading the video. I used to do it so easily. I don't know what has happened. But anyway, no problem. Uh, we'll sort out this. Uh, Let's go back to our to our presentation. And let's go back actually to to the history and evolution of biotechnology. I'm going to sort out this problem. So maybe in the next lecture we are, we are going to be able to do this. Okay, so uh, if if I if if uh, this for a small surprise, biotechnology started really over six thousand years ago, and it started as a very very simple thing, just a fermentation process. Okay, and then we come to the fermentation, of course, the use of yeast. Yeast is a fungus, you remember. The use of yeast in making bread, the use of yeast in the fermentation process, beer brewing, by the way, those are some of the oldest <laughs> biotechnology, biotechnologies, some of the oldest. And that is what we call the ancient biotechnology. It dates back 8,000 to 4,000 BC before Christ. That's how far back. And this was basically, as you can imagine, it was related to food and shelter, what the early man needed, yeah, for his survival. So uh, he needed food. Uh, he needed to, to domesticate animals. Have you ever wondered why man needed to domesticate animals? How did he live before? He used to hunt used to gather but you can imagine after some time probably hundreds of years maybe hunting was not as easy as it was a hundred years before and man started thinking how can i keep these animals right close to me make sure that if they increase in number then i'm in direct control i don't have to run after them <laughs> I just have to take one and yeah, sacrifice it for my own personal needs. At times I even wonder, how did he decide which animal to domesticate? Is it by the nature of the animals? You see, how did he decide which animal to eat? Probably the animal that ate plants was easy for him to cut. Maybe they were more docile compared to the carnivores. So before you even come to domestication, there are so many other questions before that. How did he settle on the animals to domesticate? But I'm sure based on what he was hunting, it was easy for him. You can imagine, uh, did he ever think of hunting a lion, for example? 
Maybe not, because a lion is so aggressive, it might end up eating him. But if he ran after a rabbit or a chicken, probably they would run away and say, oh, this one is scared of me, I can, I can go for it. So I'm just trying to lay the basis that that is how far back biotechnology started. And of course, with domestication of animals came to the issue of trying to improve the yield of the animals, uh, trying to, uh, like to keep the good, healthy animals for breeding so that he can pass on those good genes down the line and that kind of thing. Uh, by the year 2000 BC to about 1900, they did us a long time of, uh, I think, almost close to 4,000 years. Um, there was what we call the classical biotechnology. I'm going to explain it a little bit further. And this was built on the earlier, that ancient biotechnology. And uh, fermentation, for example, now, was they started applying processes like fermentation for food production, for the production of medicine, and that kind of thing. So from the 1900s to the 1953s, in came genetics. Uh, and as you're going to see later, the, the discovery of, of, of genetics, uh, the discovery of chromosomes, the discovery of cells, all the way to the next phase up to 1976, serious DNA research started. And when this started, that is when we say science exploded. If you can look at the pace that science has moved since the discovery of the DNA, it is what we call a fast pace. There is so much happening. Not one waiting for the other to happen, but attempts happening concurrently. There is... Um, discovery here, discovery here, a discovery here, a discovery here. Not necessarily one following the other, but happening uh, concurrently. So you can imagine the pace is so fast. I think before you blink it, there's already a new, a new discovery and that kind of thing. And remember, it's not just about the discovery. It's also about the application of that knowledge. So there is so much application of the biotechnology knowledge. And uh, that has just sort of revolutionized things. Yeah? Modern technology, which we can say started from 1977, now manipulates genetic information in organisms. This is where we've got genetic engineering. We are going to have a whole topic on genetic engineering. Uh, various technologies that help us to improve crop yields, GMOs fall under that, food quality, agriculture, name it, name it. There, there is so, so much more now happening. And um, of course, as I said before, very, very useful for human beings, very useful for life, very useful for uh, maybe the environment but also we are also taking very, very huge risks. We are taking risks and it's very easy at times when you think about the benefits to forget about the risks and yet they are there. So let's look at old technology or old biotechnology. As I said before, this was the domestication of wild animals and how did it start? It just started by observing man catching a few, let's assume, a few wild goats, a few wild cows, a few wild chicken, putting them in his shelter, wherever he used to stay. And then he's observing them as he's staying with them. He's looking at them, he's observing them. And he's starting to understand, oh, this one is very strong, very healthy. When diseases come, this one somehow survives. This is a good one. Or maybe Excuse you know, me, madam. Sorry? Uh, we can't see your screen kindly. Really? Yeah. I thought I was sharing. Sorry. Can you now? Still not yet. Can you see it? 
not yet no we are not doing it yeah but he's telling me now either i stop sharing it's it is sharing i don't know okay let me stop sharing and upload it again but it is already in the oh, oh sorry i think it was an error that occurred let's try again can you see it can you yes. see this yeah i think an error occurred i just saw there was an error occurred I, that is beyond me i'm sorry about that so we go to the domestication of wild animals uh sorry uh so we are now looking at uh the evolution of biotechnology and we are looking at old biotechnology, that ancient biotechnology. And remember we said it just began by man maybe domesticating wild animals. And maybe he took a few cows, a few sheep, a few goats, a few chicken, and just started observing them. And probably he noted, oh, this one is normally strong, resistant to diseases. This one lays good eggs. This one produces a lot of milk. I don't know. I'm just imagining. Okay. And probably he said, oh, this one, it would be good to have this line. And maybe he realized, oh, there were some weak ones who, which maybe died or which had poor production. Maybe he said, these ones are not good. And maybe that is where he started thinking of animal breeding, deciding which, one, which genes does he, okay, he didn't know genes, but which one does he want to keep breeding? So this initial period of evolution of farming led to another development in methods for food preservation. Remember, for example, you have grown crops, you have kept animals, you are going to harvest milk, you are going to harvest meat, you are going to harvest uh, grains. How are you going to keep them? Because maybe what you've produced, you need it, or you can only take so much today. So. You need some for tomorrow. How do you preserve it? So probably this now led to the issue of preservation of this food that he was producing and also storage. How was he going to store this food? So I hope it's making sense how, how, how this happened. Okay? It may not have looked like biotechnology, but it was. This was gene, non-gene biotechnology. For example, cheese uh, uh, in Kenya, we are not regular meat uh, cheese eaters. But in the West, in, in, in Europe, in the US, and many other countries, even in the Middle East, cheese is a very, very important food product. And I think that's why cheese was not discovered in Africa. We, <laughs> but, uh, cheese is one of the fast, fast direct products of biotechnology. And how is it produced? It is prepared by adding rennet to sour milk. What is rennet? Rennet is a microorganism that is found in the gut of, um, I think, of carbs. Okay. Right now, actually, rennet is being produced uh, synthetically. But the old man, the, the ancient man used actually to get it from the gut of uh, cows. Um, I think for, if I think of Africa, no, let me not think for you. Tell me, uh, do you think in Africa, think about milk do you think we had some forms of biotechnology in africa in kenya i'm asking you class mnataka tuniwata jamajina and some of you are registered toys Mosiera Ogega. Ogega Mosiera Ukoapi.
Ogega is not there. Nyale Sada. Nyale Sada, I have a question for you. I'm asking, do you know any form of like an ancient biotechnology in Africa or in Kenya involving milk? Maybe the culling gene where they ferment the using charcoal or where they keep it until they it becomes they don't know more sick. I think maybe that's a bit of biotechnology. Okay, tell us what they use. Um I'm not sure about it, but I know they use the charcoal. They add they add it in the milk and leave it to ferment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do you have a challenge in here who can help? What do they who knows what they use? They add lemon. They add lemon into fresh milk and turn to fermented milk. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking that there's much more than lemon that they use because lemon, if you if you think about lemon, it's a it's a late entrant. It it came with the with the with the colonialists, but before that, that technology was still there. So it must have been putting the the milk to make it sour. Even in the other hum, uh, communities, they they used to keep. Uh, they used to put milk in containers and it would go sour just because of the bacteria and they take sour milk, maziwamala. So, but for the calendars, they use the, they put the ash of a certain tree to make more sick. And that is a form of biotechnology in itself. So let's continue. So much as we don't produce uh, cheese, we still have some things that we can say this is uh, our ancient biotechnology. And I've said that yeast is one of the oldest microbes to be used, it's a fungus, to be used for man's benefit. We've used yeast for so long in so many settings. So, yeah. Now, I have an assignment here. I'm going to send you this PowerPoint. And you're going to look at table 1.2 in this uh, document. If you open this, if you look at what I'm doing, you will just need to go to open hyperlink and open it. Once you open it, if you say open hyperlink, can you see what I've done? So are you seeing the new document? Yes, yeah. we are seeing it. You can see the new document. Yeah, we are doing. Yeah, so this is the document. It's history, scope, and development of biotechnology. I, I want you to take time and go through it. You, you don't need to go through everything. I've told you the table to look out for. So I expect you to look at that table. And uh, I want you to choose, it has processes and their development. So I want, uh, let me see whether I can actually, sorry that. So you go there, you open hyperlink, you go to table 1.2. There is a whole table 1.1 full of the development of, so this is table 1.2. Can you see it? No. Oh, you can't yes. see it? Oh, yes yeah. or no? Yes. No. 
Okay, no. fine. So once you open the hyperlink, you see uh, it's called Biotechnological Processes and Products Developed in the Ancient Period. So the first column is process or product, and ne the next one is events that contributed to its development. So what I want you to do, what I want you to do is to choose one of the processes of the products in this table and get more information on its development or current improvement. Uh, this should only take five slides. So what happens when we come in for the next lesson, God willing, we are going to get into, into breakout rooms. We are going to discuss a little bit and then you're going to choose one person who is going to make a presentation. So remember, you're looking at one of those ancient processes and look at how has it developed up to now and also look at its application. So I hope that is clear. I'm going to send you the PowerPoint, so no problem. So after ancient biotechnology, we have what we call the classical biotechnology. So this is the second phase of the development of biotechnology. So it's a, so it's a bit of a mixture of discovery of new things and application of the ancient uh, knowledge. This happened between 1800 and the mid 20th century. So in the classical era, Different observations started pouring in, supported by scientific evidence. Remember, in the ancient biotechnology, the observations were there, but the science behind it, people didn't really know what was happening. But in this case now, there is, people are carrying out experiments, people are publishing, there is, there is a scientific backing for, for all these processes that were taking place. So in this uh, stage also, there's transfer of genetic information from one generation to another. It took center stage. And this is when, if you remember your form four genetics, the, Medell, the Mendelian genes, the Mendel genetics, when, can you see? Yes. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. We're together. Okay, great. Yeah, so I'm saying it's also at this, in this classical biotechnology stage, that's when the issue of transferring genetic information from one generation now took center stage, just because of the Mendelian genetics. Then uh, Mendel, introduced the idea of genes as hidden factors of inheritance, which are transferred from one generation to the next. If you think about the contribution of Mendel, it was great. But unfortunately, it went unnoticed for so many years until another scientist come, had, had to come and validate, I think almost 30 years after. And you might wonder, how come uh, Mendel didn't even get a Nobel Prize? I think it's because at this time also, as I was reading, I realized that at this time also, this is when Darwin had come up with the theory of evolution after he did that uh, voyage in the Beagle, B-E-A-G-L-E, and he went to, to this island the Galapagos Island observed animals and birds and everything, and he came up with the, the theory of evolution. So everybody was just like busy digesting this new theory. And Mendel actually sort of just got forgotten somewhere in the background until, of course, so many years after that, uh, people realized, hey, come on, there's somebody who had, uh, who, who had discovered something but nobody noticed. So again, it was brought into the limelight 30 years after his demise. So it's at this stage also where we had the discovery of the cell, discovery of chromosome, discovery of nutrient agar, which is cultured 
which is used to culture pure strains of bacteria. This is the time also there was the development of the smallpox vaccine. At this time also, Alexander Fleming was a British physician. He discovered antibiotics and later penicillin, which we are still using today to treat infectious diseases. In fact, he was so elated about this discovery <clears throat> and say that antibiotics and vaccines will be the savior of mankind. So the question is, would he be responsible for the ever increasing human population and aging? We don't know why, because when penicillin came, so many problems due to infectious diseases were sorted. Uh, penicillin, of course, generally antibiotics. And it also reduced aging. People could live longer. It didn't reduce aging, it increased the lifespan of people. So could we, uh, could we blame him for human beings not uh, responding to carrying capacity? I don't know whether you remember in SMR 311 when you're talking about the carrying capacity and we say that human beings are exempt they don't follow the current capacity because of technology, because of improvement in medicine, so, and all that kind of thing. So that is something to think about, just something to provoke you. And then, of course, today we have modern biotechnology. What do you have to do? So the previous discoveries proved that the much needed tools are sold to the fast-paced discoveries and developments of uh, biotechnology. So what we got in the ancient, <coughs> excuse me, ancient biotechnology and classical biotechnology have seen to the, the what we are experiencing now, the fast-paced discoveries and developments of this modern tech biotechnology. So we are applying the knowledge that was acquired in those first two phases. And this has clearly developed into several categories of biotechnology. Remember, we mentioned this earlier on as we were starting. We've got medicine, we've got agriculture, we've got industry, we've got environment. Uh, and I'm not thinking that we'll be able to go through all of them. So what, what is this telling us? That biotechnology is basically a build-up of knowledge that started so many years back and I just started by observations and improvements and that kind of thing. So what we are experiencing today, which as I said before, is mind boggling. There's so much that's happening almost every day. And, and we gave a good example of the, we gave a good example of the, of the vaccine and, and one of the arguments, the COVID vaccine, people are saying, oh, it has taken so long. It took so long to develop the polio vaccine. It took so long to develop all these other vaccines. But just like that, we already have, less than a year, we already have the COVID vaccine. How, how is this possible? Uh, I think if you're looking at science, you can already see why it is possible. And, and things are moving so fast that, that the basic knowledge is already there. So I think what remains now is application and the applications are happening left, right and center. And uh, uh, I think even very, very, very soon, uh, even the vaccines that we are talking about as a job will soon be just a pill that you take and there you are, you've, you've got your, your vaccine and that kind of thing. So one of the reasons, well, one of the, the reasons why people are worried uh, is because at times you do not have the, a foreknowledge of what has been happening in the background for so many years back. Uh, if you look at vaccines, before there were antigen, antibody kind and of the things, place we, of we the are not there anymore. We are at mRNA, uh, mRNA vaccines. Okay. A different way of doing vaccines from what was there before. So 
I can only say that biotechnology is just like getting there. It is exploding and it is good, but there is a big but. But we've got to be very, very careful. Scientists have to be very, very careful. And people have also got to be very, very careful because uh, it is happening so fast. There's so much information we don't have. I don't know whether you remember in last semester when you're looking, looking at international environmental law and we're looking at the principles of environmental law. And you remember one of the principles called, um, one of the principles that we say is the precautionary principle. That principle will always keep nagging at our consciences, reminding us. Maybe at times when you're not sure, you better not do it. So, uh, to what extent will it be applied? I don't know. We are yet to find out that. So, I think we're just concluding our first lecture. Uh, thank you, first and foremost, for attending. I hope everybody has registered. Um, as I said before, this is improved Google Meet, which is very good. Uh, but uh, of course, there are some things that are a bit challenging even for me. But I think one of the things that we have, and that is one of the things that is in our favor, is the, the breakout rooms. And my, 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 we are going to make use of them. So don't plan on missing out. So at least now I know that we can be able to do that. Uh, if you haven't registered, if you haven't written your name in the, in the chat, make sure you do so. Uh, I'm trying to wonder, did, did you write your names? Because I can't see any. Did you, did you sign your names in the chat? We wrote the names as you left, as you gave us the five minutes break, coming back, the names are not there. Oh, did you, then I think you need to write them again. Can I give you the next uh, four minutes, just everybody to, to write your names, please? Because we need this for records, so, because I don't know whether they were recorded. So just make sure. All right, guys, so today is back make day. Sure you do that now. I'm going to take you through my workout I've been doing to get... So has everybody registered? Okay. So I'm assuming everybody has registered. So I'm going to send you the notes. Look at the two assignments. Look at the two assignments. Make sure you do them. So, so. And then in the next lecture, we are going to look at this. So Wednesday, we have another lecture. Just get ready for it. Yeah, and we hope that we are going to build up of, on knowledge. So thank you very much for attending. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.